Lesson 7 has two parts. The first part is on percent and the second part is on equations from geometry. Let's just go ahead and understand percent by working some practice problems. And maybe you remember percent problems. Those are just like fraction and decimal problems. We have the same kind of format for them. Fractional part of a number we say f times of equals is. We think of that formula to help us set up the problem. Decimals we think of d times of equals is. Percent we think of that as p over 100. Because when we say percentage, like 20 percent, that really is a fraction, right? It's really 20 over 100. But we don't say 20 over 100 of what number is 82. We say 20 percent or we use a symbol a percent symbol which is shorthand for over 100. See how it has the two little zeros in there? It's shorthand for over 100. So in a percent word problem we say P over 100 times of equals is. And that formula will be given problems where two of those three parts are known. We're trying to find the unknown or missing part. So we've been given 20 percent of what number is 82. Well, our percentage is 20, so we say 20 over 100 times what number? We don't know this number. Is 82 or equals 82. And so what number? We know that that will equal 82. Change sides. We invert that coefficient of the unknown value times 100 over 20, which we could just simplify to 5. 82 times 5. So 82 times 5, that would equal 410. And so 20% of 410, that equals 82. Now, to help us understand the problem, we could also draw a diagram and think of 20%. So we could make a little diagram. 20% of what number is 82? Here's 20%. Here's 80%. 20 percent is 82. We don't know the 80 percent part and the total we just found was 410. So drawing that diagram that just helps us think about the problem. We see that 82 is really a small part of the total or 20 percent. The total is 100 percent. That's why we put 80 percent in the second part of that diagram. So if you need a diagram to help you visualize percentage problems, then by all means draw one. Let's do another one. 4,800 is what percent of 3,000? Well, let's just think of our percent formula. P over 100 times of equals is. And it says 4,800 is what percent of 3,000? Or we could think of it, what percent of 3,000 is 4800. So we don't know the percentage on this problem and so that's what we're trying to find. Percent of 3000. So we'd say P over 100 times 3000 is 4800. Now the 3000, the of part, that's always our total. That's what we start with. And so if we think of a diagram, 100% is 3,000. 100% or the total is 3,000. Now we have 4,800, so that would be 100% plus another part, which would be basically plus 1,800. So we should get a percent greater than 100 on this. We're adding to 100%, so it'll be like 130, 150. It'll be some percentage greater than 100. Let's go ahead and solve for it. On the left side, we can simplify 3,000 3, over 100. That would just equal a 30. And then we could divide both sides by 30, and we'd have P equals 4,800 over 30 or 480 over 3 or 160 and so that's our percentage and we'll put a percent symbol at the end 160 percent 4800 is 160 percent of 3000 
and so the diagram that helped us visualize what we were doing there and we can see that we had a greater percentage than the original a greater amount than the original amount in part B we'll be applying what we know about geometry and some of the different properties and rules that we've learned in geometry from the previous lessons to solving some equations setting up and solving some equations look at practice problem C what I want you to do is solve for X A and B now just think about what we have here we have a transversal line that is intersecting a pair of parallel lines and so we know that vertical angles are equal in a situation like this and then we know that where the transversal intersects each of those parallel lines we get similar angle relationships as well so we could use some colors we know that this angle right here is equal to this angle and likewise up on the top this angle would equal this angle so one of those angles we know its value is 5x plus 11 we could add that to 3x minus 19 because those two angles would be supplementary so this one right here also equals or is supplementary to 3x minus 19 doesn't equal it but it's supplementary to it we could add those up to a total of 180 and so we could say 3x plus 5x is 8x and then we have a 19 and or a negative 19 and, and an 11 that would be a negative 8 equals 180 and then we can say 8x is equal to 180 8. Then we can solve for x. 188 divided by 8 would equal 23.5 degrees. And actually it's not really a degree. The total of the parentheses, what's in the parentheses, that's equal to degrees. So we won't really say that x is 23.5 degrees. Now let's solve for a and for b. Now A and B are equal, right? So we could say that A equals B equals, it doesn't equal 23.5, it equals 3x minus 19. So we need to do that 3 times 23.5 minus 19. And so if we did 23.5 times 3, that would equal 70.5 minus 19 that would equal 51.5 and so that's what A and B equal and so if we want to write down everything in a row here X equals 23.5 and then A equals B equals 51.5 degrees. Now those are angles. A and B are angles. X is a value within that term representing the angle. So when you do these problems, decide what relationship you need to do to set all the different values and expressions equal to each other. Solve for your unknown value. Okay, well that's all for lesson 7.